Well, last Sunday we did a course on introduction to the PIC, and along the way we looked at uh, some circuits that were reading voltages or light levels and so on, which are analog readings. And I pulled out this list just from the Easy Points kits. All of these, in one way or the other, have inputs that are not digital, they're not off on switches or whatever. They've got varying voltage readings. And they all use the same 12F675 chip. So I thought it was worthwhile uh, looking at how that actually works. That's a very basic uh, idea of a PIC chip that's got an analog input. In this case, it's a, a 10K variable resistor. So we can, we can change the voltage on that analog input and read it by the PIC. And in this example, I've got a LED as the output, and we can make it do two things. We can either change the voltage level and that would change the rate at which a LED flashes. So you can make it flash faster or, or slower. Or it could be we use the varying input there, a voltage level, to actually put out pulse width modulation. So in other words, we can make the LED be brighter or dimmer. The example here is using a voltage difference from a trimmer or a pot. It could be light levels from, from a light detector or the infrared kit or the laser kit and so on. In all these cases, it's taking the, the readings as a varying voltage that's then read by the PIC. So the question is then, how does the PIC know it's using pin two for the input? How does it know it's using pin four for the output? How does it actually handle all these readings? How does it get there? So. The first thing to look at then would be, we looked at the memory that's used by a PIC last week. We said there's a, a huge chunk that's used by the program itself. There's a smaller chunk that's used for data and that stores all the variables as a program runs. And there's a chunk called EEPROM, which stores values that you want to maintain even with the power off. What we didn't cover, is that the bottom section that you see there in the data memory is called registers. They're not variables in the sense of storing a, a byte or an integer, large numbers. What it stores is little flags that are either on or off, high or low. And they keep track of what's happening in the system and it's also used for setting up the system. We won't look at all the, the ins and outs of that because Quite a few of these are only required when we're looking at the assembly language. But there's the table, or one of the tables from the PIC specification. But you'll see there, there's the memory location where you'll find these. We'll look particularly at the very last one. But there's pages and pages of these registers. And of course, the, the bigger the chip, it means that the more facilities it's got, the more pins it's got to handle and so on, and therefore the registers area gets bigger and bigger to match because you've got to handle more issues. But from the point of view of us today, we're only looking at how to get an analog reading, and that's going to use those little values that you see there. Down the right hand side is helpful, it tells you where you'll find more details of that particular register. You'll find it in page 43 and 59 of the, the, the PIC 675 manual. So we'll, we'll work our way through what these mean and try and unveil some of the, the mysteries, as it were. That's how we use it. And if you look at the, the source code for all the, the PIC kits that I uh, mentioned earlier, they all use that piece of code. And we'll look at what that means. It's confusing to look at, but we'll look at it one line at a time. How it's called is, if you want to get any level, it could be a sensor level, you could put voltage level, it could be light level, it could be voltage reading level, whatever. Whatever the variable's called, you ask, what pin do you want to read it from? Now the PIC 675 has got four analog pins. So in this case, 
this example, we're going to say, go and read what value you'll find on analog three, which remember was here. So to read that, to read that voltage there, we would issue that command. Please read what you find on pin three and put the answer into that variable. So it's got to call up a whole other piece called a function. In JAL, we're used to using procedures and some functions. Procedures just handle and process data. A function does the same, but can return the value. It does some work and then sends back the answer, as it were. So let's have a look at the function in a bit more detail. We just give the function a name, whatever that may be, and you then pass in what you want to be processed. In this case, it's only one variable. We're called y, 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 y. But it could be two or three, be four or five. You could pass in a whole bunch of bytes and say, here's a formula, and work out the answer. In this case, we're passing in one variable and do stuff, whatever that may be. You process things using that variable. And then when you get the answer, you return whether that something is. You return that to here. So that's what comes into the procedure, and that's the byte that goes back out again. So there's an example. We're going to read from, we'll call it read the pin as a function. And we'll call it an, the analog pin. And we'll return a byte. So here we have it here. We want to find out a, a level, a value, and we say read pin three. What happens is the three goes up to there, is used and returned. We'll see that a little bit later. So there are three stages to, to getting an analog reading. You've got to set up the thing to do an analog reading, get the reading itself, and then send back the result. So what's the setup part, first of all? Well, we said we want to read pin three, and we sent pin three in there. That doesn't make it happen. You've got to then tell the chip itself what pin you want to use. And that's where we come down to the AD control, analog digital control register. So you send the three from your code, the ordinary code, into the function. So three is now AN pin. That's sent, sent in there for processing. And there's where we have the first line that you saw inside the, the function. The channel select. And we've selected that to be three. So add con three is going to be a value of three. So we sent three from there to there. We sent three from there to there. And the result now is to put three into the AD control, which are these two bits here. If you've been to the electronics course, You'll know we're talking in binary, so that's value. It could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So it can go from two nothings up to two ones. In other words, you can have four different values stored here, which is handy because the 675 has got four different analog ports. Clearly, if you had a bigger pick with a dozen analog ports, you'd have to have extra select pins. The series aren't used. So that's us done a very first point of setting up. We've told the, the pick chip that we're wanting to use channel three. In other words, analog pin three. So I've got to start now. Next thing you, you can do is decide what level do you want to read. The pick chip works at uh, nominally five volts. And therefore, you can take readings between nothing and five. And they'll return just over a thousand levels between nothing and five, which is fine. But what happens if you only want to read uh, outputs that go between, say, nothing and one volt? 
it means that most of those levels are, are lost to you. You're only using a small subgroup of them. So if you want to read lower voltage input levels, you can change this, the voltage configuration flag. Well, they call it the reference bit. So if you put a zero in there, which I've got here, it then puts it into there, and that tells you, take the readings with respect to five volts. If you want something smaller, you'd have to say, put a one in there, in which case you're comparing the, the reference to whatever comes in. Now, there we go. What did it do? The VCFG says, use the reference pin. If I put it to a one, it, what I mean is, use voltage reference. There's a description of the, the various pins. We covered some of them last week. I didn't cover that one. So GP1 is not only an input or output pin. It's not only an analog to digital input pin, but it's all can also can be used to input a reference voltage. Like that. If you want very low readings, we set that flag to one to read from the reference pin. And then we can put in something smaller, say one volt, if you're looking for only a small amount of change. So that's the second bit of the setup. The first one is what channel do you want to look at? Which AN channel? Same thing you want to say is, do you want to use five volts as your reference, as standard, or do you want something to do smaller changes? So once you've done that, you set it up. How do you get the reading? Well, there are some other flags down here. And one of them, the three steps, you've got to tell the ADC to get ready. It's not always constantly reading, you've got to tell it you want to read. So you're going to enable, put the analog to digital converter on, AD on, which is here. Oh, sorry, here. That's going to switch it on. It takes a little bit of time, so you've got to wait. It doesn't uh, get set up instantly. You wait a very short time, and then you say go, which is the go pin here, and that starts the conversion. So that line of code starts the conversion and then it'll stay high until it's done. So all you do is that same pin starts off high and eventually when it's finished the conversion, it'll go low. So you start the conversion, you just keep waiting. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? And as long as you're not done, right, that EDC zero, not done, then you keep on going. And when it drops to zero, you know you've finished conversion and you've now got the value. So we set it up, first of all, and now we've got the reading. And now what we need to do to, to get, it, uh, get it back to the, the rest of the program? Well, first of all, what the A to uh, D analog to digital read is a 10-bit a 10 value. So for those of you who know your, your binary, it can handle from all zeros, which would be zero, up to all ones, which would be 1,023, i.e. it can handle 1024 different voltage levels. And anything in between will just be, you just add up the binary amounts. So it turns 10 bits, not uh, as you'd expect, eight or, or maybe twice that, an integer of 16, it turns a 10-bit value. Which then leaves us with choices. We've got 10 bits of return as, as a reading, but there's a way to return all 10, but most of people just work on with a byte at a time. And within the registers, there's one called address high and address low. And you've got a choice at this point, gents. You can either drop this into here, or at least eight of them, and lose a couple. Or you can drop it into there, use those eight, and lose a couple. So why would you use that one rather than the other? And that's where the 
next line of code comes in. But before we get there, there are four possibilities. Shift everything to the right. You've put it shifted right, so it's all in here, and you've lost those two to here. If you then try to read that, there's only two values in there. Well, that's, uh, we'll look at these options and see what happens. There's one. Let's try that, the shift to the right. So that whole block of 10 moves to the right-hand side and drops in. So it drops in these quite happily, and it drops only two in there. You can't then really use the, the high byte. It's only got four values. It's either 0, 0, 0, 1, you know, 1, 0, or 1, 1. There's only four different values. So it doesn't cover the whole range. It's not at all getting any good resolution. So you can't use the shift right, use the high byte. You can use the shift right and use the low byte. And it gives you good values, pro proper readings, anything between nothing up to 255. Five. However, we want to read between nothing and 1023. So what happens when you go above 255 using this system? If you put in 511, well, it reads it as a bunch of ones. You've, you've actually read 511 as a value from the input pin, but it returns a reading of 255. If you put in 767, what happens? Again, you'll return 255. Put in 1023, once again, you'll return uh, 255. So it works great, that system, until you have higher numbers and then it falls down. Okay. There's, at 256, there's a more concrete example. Up to 255, they were all ones. The minute you, you get to 256, what happens? That goes high, the rest go low. You've actually read 256, but it tells you it's read zero. Same thing when you get to 512, it gives you back an answer of zero. And then when they're both ones, an answer is zero. So what's happening now is it's called a rollover, and we'll show a very short the demo of that just for shortly when we're finished. So using the method of shift them right, shift everything right, and look at the lower byte only is very okay when it comes to low values, but it gives you all kinds of mistakes once you go beyond 255. So, how about we shift to the left? Well, we can shift the 10 to the left, drop them down, but we can't really use the low byte as our answer now because, once again, we only get four values. If you read the high byte, however, shift left and then read the high byte, we get everything from four up to 1023. We just lost the very lowest resolution there, but at least it all works happily. So most people will be using shift left, use the high byte, unless you want to be reading very low levels. That's what we want to do. The question is, how do we how do we do that? What command gets us there? And that's where this flag comes in. That's the the format. If you make the value there zero, it will left justify. Move all the ten to the left. If you put a one in there, you right justify. If we then add it all together, it makes more sense. So when you want to read an analog value, you tell it what pin you want to use, and then you say, when I'm finished, left justify everything. I want my readings to be between nothing and five. I want it to be pin three, this said so. Now I want to start the, 
the, the acquisition process, give it a little time to finish, ask for a conversion, wait till the conversion is done and send back the high byte. So when you return the high byte, it goes up to here and is sent back from the function into your program. So all of that uh, looks confusing, but in fact, it's um, when you see it bit one uh, line at a time, it makes a lot more sense. I just got a little, that's my little demo board I used to program, and I used some jumpers. I got a wee pot here that I'm using to give me the analog, and this is me doing the preferred way of doing it, moving them to the left and reading uh, the high byte. And I've programmed it so that as I turn it, as the level goes up, it eventually triggers different levels. There's a green, there's an amber, and a red. Right? So that works quite happily over the whole range. If I had more LEDs, I could have, have I could have ten of these in a row if I wanted to. It doesn't matter. Not with a six, seven, five. It's not got enough outputs. But what I want to do now is I'll take that off. I'll put in the one that only reads up to 255 and show you the rollover effect. I turn that up. Comes on, comes on, comes on. Yep, no problem. And then does it all again. Back to the beginning. What it's doing is it's reading the nothing to two five fives quite successfully there. But when I get to two five six, they all go out and they start counting all over again. So I'm, I'm seeing the nothing to two five five four times there because of the rollover effect. So if you, if you happen to take the wrong uh, flag. You'd be wondering why things are going really funny 